so good that we can trust Jesus. He lifts our burdens and helps us. Yeah, that's what the song is about this one. I'm going to play just like that when I grow up. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> I'm, uh, I started to say I'm practicing. I'm not practicing. Uh, but uh, I need some practice if I'm ever going to reach that. <laughs> All right. Thank you, folks. Very good. Very encouraging. Aren't you glad that he, uh, there are things that he can do. There are things that's beyond our control. But there's nothing beyond his control. And I'm so glad for that today. If we're faithful to pray, praise his name. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Revelation, 14th chapter. And we'll be reading uh, verses 1 through 5. I do desire your prayers this morning. <clears throat> I uh, primarily want to want to talk to us. Today, along the line of that song, uh, Victory in Jesus, and talk to us about victory. Praise God. I wonder, before I begin, is there anyone that enjoys losing? You play a game, you like to lose. Uh, you, uh, <clears throat> you do a piece of work, and you like it to turn out wrong. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever met anybody that
that he enjoyed being the loser. Um, I told somebody recently, I think it was over at Oshaleta the other day at camp meeting, uh, talking to the children, it was. Remember those boys and girls, Brother Jack, uh, some of you, uh, how they were trying to get all that money. They were just working, working, working. They were, I mean, I don't think bees worked any harder than those children worked. And, and uh, I think I came home a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars short of what I went over there with. Just because those children were always wanting money. It was for a good cause. I think they said they were going to give it to Sister Becky Skank to help toward her surgery expenses. And so it was for a good cause, and they were doing a good good work. But uh, uh, Josh Gordon, this this little guy, he he's not shy. Maybe if you know him, you know that. And I don't know how old Josh would be now. Thirteen, maybe. I'm guessing. I don't know. But anyway. Uh, <clears throat> Right off, he, he hit me for money, and almost more, no more than I got into building, and, uh, and about three times every service after that. And, uh, and so I gave him a little bit of money, and I said, Now, Josh, I'll tell you how we're going to do this. No use you pestering me every day, every service, because I know what you're going to do. So just don't bother me till the last day I'm here, which will be Friday. And I'm going home sometime on Saturday, but uh, Friday sometime I'll give you some money. And I'll tell you why I'm waiting. I want to know who's winning. I know it's competition, boys against girls, to see who can raise the most money. And I said, I want to see who's winning because I'm going to give my money to the opposite side. And he said, oh, well... The boys are ahead. I said, okay, you just told me that I'm going to give my money to the girls. Well, he wasn't real happy about that. Me, he laughed and, and uh, good-natured. After, uh, after a while, those girls finally woke up, and they started asking for some money, too, not as much as the boys. But um, I was a little bit unfair because I went to the source to find out who's ahead. Boys don't know. Girls don't know. Uh, Josh is always saying, Brother Pryor, I'm afraid they're winning. I said, then you're telling me I'm going to have to give my money to the girls because I want you guys to come out either tied or real close to it. And uh, after a while, I said, Josh, the reason I'm doing that is I never like to be on the losing side. And any time you have a competition like this, you have a winner but as sure as you have a winner, then you got to have a loser. And I never liked to be the loser. I didn't like that feeling. And so I don't suppose that you like it, or I don't suppose that the girls like it. So I don't want any losers. So I want to make it come out as close as I can uh, to being tied. Well, I don't know how they came out, because I had to leave before the thing was over. But uh, when they left there, I had them pretty well evened up. And uh, uh, I don't know how. Does anybody know how it turned out? Boys won. Boys won. Okay, do you know by how much? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, that would have broke my bank for sure if I'd have been there. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, uh, they told me that so, now usually girls win. And... Uh, so the boys were working, at, and they, they really did. There was a little guy, I don't think that guy could have been three years old. He's always going around, and those boys caught on that people were sympathetic to this little guy. He wouldn't hardly talk. He'd just come up and hold his cup out. And uh, the boys figured that out, so they'd come around. Then after a while, they'd send him back around to the same group, uh, see what he could get. But uh, anyway, they they had a lot of strategy, and they were having fun, and I had fun playing along with them. But uh, I want to talk to us today about victory. 
Let's look at the verses here. Chapter 14 of Revelation, verse 1. And I looked, and I looked, John speaking, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Sion, and with him and 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Now, not back a few chapters, it talks about the sealing of this 144,000. And then it says in the second verse, and I heard a voice from heaven. As a voice of many waters and as a voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144 and 4,000 which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Our gracious Father, we want to thank you for this morning's service. We thank you, Lord, for your presence we sense here. We're asking, O oh God, now as we've come with a reading of your word, that, that you would come and anoint your own word, O oh God. May you anoint the, uh, the ears of of a listening congregation today. May you bless the hearts of every one of us uh, to receive what you have for us so that when we go from this place, O oh Lord, that we can say, surely God has spoken through his word. May you be near to all of those today uh, who aren't with us, those who are needy in soul. Uh, supply the need of their souls, O oh Lord, that uh, they would not be found wanting on that day when you uh, when you bring us into judgment. And for these things, Lord, we'll praise your worthy name. Amen. Several things I would notice here in the scripture. Uh, first of all, John is, is fully aware. He's cognizant of what's going on. And he said, and I looked. And uh, he's seen a lot of things uh, during this time that the uh, Holy Spirit has been speaking to his heart. He's seen uh, all kinds of things. And, and sometimes in the, uh, in the symbolism of things, uh, as he sees it, sometimes it's in heaven. Other times he sees it happening on earth. Uh, sometimes he sees angels coming out of the temple in heaven. Other times he sees angels flying through the air. Sometimes he hears just a voice. But everything that John saw and heard made a profound impression on his mind and upon his heart. I think that there were things that he never forgot. Uh, he was an old man at this time. He would live to be a few more years older. Uh, he would preach again. And uh, uh, probably back at Ephesus. And, and, and John has a lot of things to tell. Uh, you think I've got stories. You should have talked to John. He, he had a lot more, and I'll tell you right now, he had a lot better ones. Uh, but, but John was impressed by a lot of things, and uh, sometimes he'll say things like this, and I heard a voice. Sometimes he'll say, I heard a great voice. And then this time, this time is very descriptive. He said, I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters. Uh, how many here has ever stood by Niagara Falls? All right. Did it make any noise? Was, was it pretty loud? I thought so. Uh, the... Uh, that gives you a little bit of an idea what John is talking about. I heard a voice as of many waters, a roaring, a loud noise. His was very, the voice that he heard was very clear, very distinct. And uh, he knew exactly what was being said. But he heard this voice uh, as of many waters. And as a voice of great thunder. I told you that uh, I think before, but. 
Uh, for those of you that haven't heard it, Brother August Lelf. Uh, did you folk ever know August Lelf by chance? Stuttering preacher, evangelist? All right, you missed something. But uh, Brother Lelf <clears throat> was very unique, and he was, he was uh, holding revivals in Grenada. And he said, I was there, and it rained almost every day. But he said, it, uh, I never saw lightning, and I never heard thunder. So one day I got to wondering and said, I asked this fellow, said, uh, say, does it ever thunder in Grenada? And he said, yes, it thunders here. And he said, uh, well, he said, I wasn't convinced. The guy said, yes, it thunders here. But he said, but then they say there's snow on the mountain too. And he said, what they're really talking about is fog. It's not really snow in the tropics. Uh, so he said, I still wondered are they confusing thunder with something else? So he said, okay. He said, so it thunders here? And he said, yes. He said, then tell me, what does thunder sound like? He said, thunder sounds like a house falling in a big hole. Brother Lelf said, I knew he knew exactly what thunder was. <laughs> so he said, I didn't question anymore. Well, uh, John said, that this voice of this one that he hears speaking is like great thunder. I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And so he, he sees, hears some wonderful things taking place. And then he said in the third verse, and they sung as it were uh, a new song. Amen. They sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. Now the other song that we know of that they sang before the throne, the, uh, the four and 20 elders and those four beasts, uh, they would sing or cry, holy, holy holy unto the Lord. And it says that they do that continuously, night and day. Well, there's no night there, so it has to be one continuous day, doesn't it? So it continues on and on and on, and that is their song of praise. That's what they do. Praise the Lord. But now we have a different group, and these, these people are singing a new song. Well, I wonder what they would be singing. Uh, they, uh, they're a, of a different group. They have been redeemed, it says. And so I, uh, I don't know, but uh, allow me to use my imagination for a little bit, if you will. I suppose that maybe they were singing, redeemed, how I love to proclaim it redeemed by the blood of the lamb praise the lord uh so i i believe that this probably was incorporated in some way into their new song that they're singing amen and uh can you imagine uh the volume of this song a voice of many waters sound like a loud loud report like like a voice of of a, of a great clap of thunder is very loud, very distinct. Amen. And so they're singing this new song. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow uh, the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. Amen. Remember the Lamb? Uh, back there in the fifth chapter, when it talks about uh, who is worthy to open this little book. Amen. And then this voice says, the Lamb of the tribe of Judah. In other words, Jesus Christ is worthy to open the book. Praise God. And so this Lamb that he follow, they follow wherever he goes, these were redeemed. It's repeated again. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile. And so what you find out here is these, 
These are overcomers in every sense of the word. They, they have overcome sin. They've overcome fault. They've overcome all of these temptations before the Lord. Amen. Uh, and in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault. I like that. And I saw another angel. Well, I don't want to go there. Uh, leave that angel for another time. But uh, if you're an overcomer, then you would consider yourself to be victorious, I believe. And uh, I probably uh, leave the rest of this for another time. But the, uh, there's some other thoughts that go along uh, in line with this about battles and uh, I thank God that for every battle West that you and I fight God wants us to be an overcomer he wants us to be victorious he wants us to be strengthened he wants us to be made strong and and uh, uh, can't get the right word I can picture the scene in my mind but I can't get the right word to describe it but uh, God does not want us to fail. I thank God for that. Uh, there are people that have battled addictions. I was talking to somebody the other day, and they said, I was talking about a certain uh, young man that had this, uh, this addiction, and, and they said, I don't know how he'll do. I just don't know how he's going to do. Well, I know how he's going to do. I think I know because he got saved. And I think I know how it's gonna turn out. I think he can be an overcomer by the blood of the lamb, not through his own strength, not through, uh, through addiction programs, but through the blood of Jesus Christ, that he can be victorious. I thank God today that we can be on the winning side if we choose to, choose, uh, to go that way. Praise the Lord. Well. I, uh, one, one time, and I know I've told you this story before, but again, there's some here that haven't heard, but I was a little boy. Can you believe that, Aiden? I was a little boy one time. I was uh, just six years old and going to school. Uh, big old, uh, I say big, but it's big to me. Um, red brick schoolhouse and uh, had a basement under it. And uh, you had to go upstairs uh, to get to the classroom. So there was three sets of stairs. There was a set of stairs and doorway on the, on the south and on the east and on the west. Depending on what grade you were in, that's the door you had to use. So my door was the front door on the south side of the building. There was a brick sidewalk that led from the city sidewalk, which probably also was brick, but it led up to the front steps, and I don't know, maybe four or five steps, wide steps going up. And uh, they had a rule that you could not come on the school ground until the bell rang. Now, I'm a town student, and uh, walked to school and uh, my dad took me the first day and after that I had to figure it out on my own. Uh, <clears throat> I did, by the way, this is a side, side trail, but I did pretty good until one day they, they took us somewhere for an assembly and then turned us out of that building. I didn't have a clue where my house was. I didn't know where uptown was, downtown or any res I didn't know where the school was. I didn't know where anything was. So I just followed, started following some other students. Uh, eventually, some of them wound up down close to where my folks had a restaurant, and I made it fine. But back to my, my front door experience, I stood on that sidewalk time after time. But then, after a while, I'm, I'm the new kid in the first grade. And so there were some other boys that just, they wanted to rough me up once in a while. And I wasn't particularly interested in that happening. So I tried to be as careful as I could to make sure there was a teacher or somebody present when I would step on the, on the school ground. Well, one day, it so happened 
that I had, he was a distant relative of some kind, lived down the street uh, to the east of the school, and Melvin was a senior in high school. And the high school was on the other side of the elementary school ground. So Melvin walked up city sidewalk, turned in the same sidewalk I needed to go up, and then he walked around the building and off across the ground and over to the high school building. Well, sure worked good for me because I knew Melvin, and when he'd come, to, he was going to go to school, I just walked alongside of him. And eventually he started taking my hand, and we'd walked hand in hand up, oh, I don't know, a distance from maybe from the city sidewalk here to the back of the building. And uh, I was completely safe. Uh, I don't know if I even knew there was a, a word like victorious in those days, but if I'd analyze it now, I'd say I was pretty victorious. <laughs> I didn't have anything to worry about because I had somebody there that was my protector. And I've thought of that dozens and dozens of times through the years when I felt like that Jesus Christ had come alongside of me and take hold of my hand and walk with me. And as much as say, George, you don't have a thing to worry about as long as I'm with you. Right. You don't have a thing to worry about. <laughs> and I would feel very, very, very victorious when it was over. Sometimes it's temptation. Sometimes it's accusations. Uh, I tell people every now and then that I've, I've been cussed and discussed and uh, just all kinds of things, shot and shot at and all kinds of things through life. But I thank God that Jesus Christ has been with me since February the 13th, 1962, when I bowed an old-fashioned altar prayer and gave up, repented, told God I was sorry, meant it from the depths of my heart, and walked out of that little building that night a free individual, victorious, if you will, over sin and death and hell and the grave. I was victorious that night when I left there to go home. A 40-mile ride home, and I was still victorious when I got home. And when I woke up the next morning, I was still victorious, praise the Lord, because Jesus had come to live in my heart. He had forgiven my sin. Now, the Bible says he won't live in an unclean temple, so he had to clean my heart out and make it fit for him to, to abide in. And then he stayed with me. Praise the Lord. Oh, say, I'm glad this morning for victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. Praise the Lord. All right, that's as much as I uh, will say this morning. Thank